Hello everyone and welcome back to another high level match of StarCraft 2. Now what I've got for you today is a best of three series of Protoss vs Zerg, where in game number one we find ourselves on the map Babylon. Playing right here with the red Protoss pieces, we have one of the Protoss legends who recently came back from his mandatory military service and he goes by the name of Stats. His opponent in the opposite corner, a man who's been rumored to have to start his mandatory military service for like three years now, but he's still playing pretty much every single tournament out there. Playing right here with the Blue Zerg drones, we're looking inside of the main base of Dark. Alrighty, so this particular series, it was played during the GSO Code S about, I think a month, maybe five weeks or so ago, as of me casting this particular match. I heard, however, that this series is actually a lot of fun. It was on my list of games to cast. I didn't get around to it just yet, so I'm excited to find out exactly what ended up happening yet, because I haven't seen it. So, here's the thing. Here's the situation. GSO Codes. It is one of the absolute most prestigious tournaments in StarCraft 2, and it's difficult to qualify for the event. This was played during the main event, so it's a clear example, or a clear, I guess, bit of evidence, that Stats still has what it takes to compete with the big boys, right? Even though he just came back, usually it takes players quite a while to actually get back into the swing of things, Stats apparently still knows how to play StarCraft 2 at a very high level. That being said, Dark... Whenever he plays against somebody, and he assumes that he's quite a bit better than them, he will usually play very aggressively. It seems to me that he will only really start playing macro games against you when you've beaten him a couple of times, and you've actually managed to shut down his cheese. And from what I understand in this particular series, the man decides to bring the aggression as well. So we're gonna have to find out exactly what he's got in store for us. So far though, this game looks pretty normal. Now that was a very quick pylon over here on the low ground. It's one of those things where you can actually get your tech out ever so slightly quicker on a map with a relatively short rush distance. If this is going to be a Stargate, for example, uh, I can imagine that the Oracle is going to be able to show up just a few seconds earlier. And maybe you can catch somebody like Dark off guard. So it is indeed going to be a Stargate first right here, as far as the tech structures go for Mr. Stats. Um... Got a feeling that the Cybercore should have been one hex closer to this corner over here. Should still be okay, but you gotta be very careful, man. You should definitely not be leaving any, well, more than one gap in your wall off, because it's very easy to accidentally have a bunch of Zerklings running into your base. So far, though, third base going up right here. Dark, of course, was playing that uh, expansion chicken game with the probe earlier. Eventually, the natural right here was started up. All right. Stats has now scouted his opponent's third base as well. Stargain is going to finish up. What's it going to be? It's going to be an Oracle. Okay. Oracle makes the most sense here. He'll be flying that across the map nice and early. Okay. Triple Adept here as well. Stats just playing a normal game. So that's really what he... Well, I mean... <laughs> it, always, it always feels kind of funny to call something normal. But one of the reasons that we have a so-called standard, a so-called normal in StarCraft 2, is because of players like Stats. These players are very much so the reason why the normal is the normal, because they played this game at a high level for many years, and they figure out, uh, they figured out rather, what the very best way of playing the game is. And while maybe Stats was not playing the game, well, very much for like two years, the strategies, I mean, while some of the details have changed, broadly speaking, they're still mostly the same. Okay, so yeah, that, okay, that wall off was a little cursed. I was gonna say, he decided to plug that hole right there with a pylon. That is a moment, though, where you're looking at this as a Zerk, and you're like, okay, I got you, man. Like, if you, I feel like if you dark, if, if you play against Dark and you are forced to re-wall your own natural, immediately Dark's gonna be like, yo, this guy, he has no clue what he's doing. He can't even get his wall off right. I think Zerklings, if that pylon wasn't there, could probably squeeze in between. Anyways. So far, absolutely zero workers killed. Dark has made a group of links, so I guess that's effectively shutting down some of the drones that could have been. But so far, no drone losses just yet on the side of the Zerkle, though. Yeah, right now. Okay, that's four, that's five. Nicely done right there by Stats. That's the type of damage we want to see. He did take a lot of damage, a lot of hull damage as well on one of those oracles. Only 12 HP remains. And while the shield will regenerate, it's going to be a little while, but here we go. Okay. Dark decides to plop down the Nidus network. Let's see. So, the Nidus network, 
sure everybody knows, but you can transport units from one side of the map straight towards the other side of the map. Normally, it's accompanied with roaches. So, roaches, swarm host, that sort of thing. Not the case this time around. Apparently, Dark decides to just go, I guess, queens and zerklings. He's even going to evacuate that base of his. Well, at least for a little bit. Maybe he was scared of losing more drones right there to those oracles. There were quite a few queens available, though. He's been making non-stop links here for a little while. Okay, Nidus Worm, conservative location here for the first one, at least. There is another one over here in the back of the main. Another Overlord, that is. So, I got a feeling, like, the only reason why you would do this is so you don't get shut down. There's gonna be queens here popping out very soon. There they go. Brenda, Karen, Margaret, Lily. Oh, actually, there's only... Yeah, no, there's Lily, too. Uh, they're gonna be showing up right now. Now goes the Nidus Worm in the main base. Classic one-two punch over here. Good hold so far, though, here by Stats. I mean, economically speaking, Stats is in a fantastic position. Okay. I mean, the Nidus Worm in the main base has not been dealt with at all, though. Double Nidus over here as well. Yeah, I don't think that's ideal. Brenda needs to get back to creep so she can transfuse Karen. Okay, well, instead we're going to be using some of the transfusion energy here on the Nidus Worm. Oh, no. Pretty much everything managed to get out regardless. Third base looks pretty safe. Natural also looks pretty solid. But the main base, well, there's a Zerk infestation growing over here. Got a feeling that the main base is going to get overwhelmed here eventually. Although I say that, I mean, that's an Oracle going down here. Stats could certainly uh, afford another round of warp-ins. I mean, some of his gateways are still powered over here, so I think it should definitely be manageable. Trying his best. I actually think this defense has been pretty solid. Definitely not the cleanest we could have ever seen. But so far, he hasn't really taken critical amounts of damage. Okay. Problem is, he still has no answer right here for the Queens. Dark is still just flooding more and more units out. He's going for a Roach Warren right now at home as well. Stats really needed like two units in the main base when he heard the first Night Scream to prevent the second one from popping up. I think if he would have done that, he would have been absolutely fine. Next up, Gresven. I do like it though when Dark plays these sort of strategies. Yeah, we see him play very macro focused most of the time, but then as soon as it counts, I mean, he does do quite a bit of... Hold up, what is this? That was the very first drone he ever made. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, this is what I'm talking about. When he, uh, he, he thinks he's better than you, he will oftentimes play very cheesy. And the thing is, Dark probably assumes he's better than like... Well, probably everybody out there, but he, he probably assumes there's only like six players in the world that are right around his skill level that could potentially win against him. You know what I mean? So when you see when you see the same strategies over and over and over executed at the pro level, and you see Dark, well, shutting down players that are within the top 20, constantly cheesing them, it's kind of inspiring. What is this then? Huh? I thought we were gonna go for a hatchery right over there. I'm not gonna lie. I think that probably would have been a little bit better. Either way. Stats is gonna go and check this out. I'm assuming this has to be some sort of roach play on the back of this, right? Or even like spine crawlers? I haven't seen a spine crawler cheese in a long while. Yeah, that is the absolute most disrespectful strategy you can play. <laughs> It kind of always seems to me that in 2023, right, the dirty early game cheeses have been figured out. I mean, we do occasionally see a cannon rush. I think it was Hero versus Solar with the most recent GSO code S where we did see a cannon rush as well. But generally speaking, it's only in very specific situations. Okay, so the hatchery actually gets found. Stats right there looking at his opponent's base like, yo, where are you spending your money? If you don't have a hatchery taken on the low ground, what in the world is the plan? I'm actually not sure what the plan is. There's not going to be a quick Roach Warn. Um, there's going to be some Zorklings over here. There's no drones on the other side of the map either. <laughs> this seems like the dumbest build I've seen in ages. There's the Roach Warn coming up right now for Dark. This entire build though pivots on whether or not the hatchery stays alive. So there's already a Stalker coming up. Love that shield battery position over here as well. Okay, well, we do have a couple of links trying to get in. Excellent positioning right there by Stats. 
Very smoothly done, actually. Okay, Queen is gonna pop though. Roachborn is gonna finish up. We do have Link Speed started here. <laughs> I think the plan is to go for more Queens, right? Don't we want to make a couple more Queens? Oh, we're actually gonna just spend our money on Roaches first. So three Roaches start up and a Queen Inject. So we're gonna follow this up with, I think, a Link Flood. I was thinking maybe Creep Tumors and Roaches, but I guess that's why the Link Speed is made here. Just to flood the map with a ton of units. Is this really going to work, though? So, Stats, by the way, still making a couple of probes. He needs to be careful he doesn't get too carried away. That hatchery is falling dangerously low. We don't have a lot of gas, though. It's only a single gas start right here for Dark, so it's not like he can make a lot of Ravagers off of the back of this. He's really planning on winning this game with a Zorkling flood on the back of this. Excellent defense here so far by Stats. Yep, really nicely done. Honestly, not skipping a beat so far. Here come the Zerklings. One Zealot will get caught. Very painful scream right there as well. Hatchery though, still being poked at. And it's slowly taking damage. Warp Gates are finishing up right now. How many gateways do we have? Just the two. I wouldn't mind seeing an additional gateway here for stats, I suppose. But he's been spending a lot of his money here on static defense instead. You know what? I do not see this working right here. I love the attempt from Dark. It is very cute. It would have been an incredibly demoralizing series for stats, but he ends up winning game number two quite easily. And that brings us to Royal Blood, which will be the final game in his best of three series. 13 pile on the low ground. Fair enough. Overlord first at 13 supply here as well. Okay, everything's normal, guys. No proxy hatcheries, no shenanigans. One thing that's actually kind of interesting to think about, right? So... Leading into the GSO Code S, or knowing you're going to be playing in the GSO Code S, you will know who you will be facing off against in advance. So most StarCraft 2 tournaments, they're played in a relatively short amount of time, but in the GSO Code S, you know who you will be facing off against, and that has a couple advantages. So first and foremost, you can, of course, well, study your opponent's replays. You can figure out what their current tendencies are. Now, there's a little bit of irony, because Dark hasn't been cheesing as much. He still brings it out, but he hasn't been cheesing as much as he used to back in the day. Stats, when, you know, he was at his all-time great, so he's earned like 600,000-something dollars in tournament prize money alone. He was known as the Shield of Ire, or I guess he is known as the Shield of Ire. We could see that in the previous game as well. The Shield of Ire, because he would literally just defend, 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 and then eventually overwhelm you. That's the play style that Stats has always been favoring. And for Dark to not really cheese a whole lot, for Stats to then study the replays, and then for, you know, Dark to start cheesing the man who's very well known for his defensive play, I find that very ironic. And one thing you also have to keep in mind, I mean, it's it's once again Dark being a bit of a giga chat, I suppose, but one thing to keep in mind as well is that these two, they may very well face off against each other in another tournament that takes place, like, I don't know, a month after this particular series. When it comes to high-level StarCraft 2, there's only a few dozen players, and as viewers, we can't really ever figure out the exact mind games that are at play as well. Like, for example, if these two, I don't know, played a bunch of ladder games against each other the night before this particular series was played, that may very well dictate the course of this series as well. So, it just gets a little bit funky. It just gets a little bit funky in general whenever you have these, uh, yeah, these tournament matches going on. Anyways. Dark always seems, at least mentally, a very, very strong player. Doesn't really seem to care too much about what you think. I mean, I'm calling it maybe sometimes disrespectful, quote-unquote disrespectful, some of the strategies that he chooses, but obviously Dark doesn't care. He's just trying to win the game. I heard a story one time, and I don't even know if this is a true story, but I've heard this repeated over and over and over again that one day on stream, when Dark was streaming, one of his fans wanted to pay money to play a game against Dark. So, I don't know, I think it was like a hundred bucks or whatever, they donated, like, hey, can I play a game against you? And Dark was like, sure, I'll do it. So, <laughs> this player, very excited about him, right? Very excited about the situation. He's like, oh man, I get to play a game with one of the greatest players of all time. Now, word on the street has it, 
the dark 12 pulled that guy and won the game within two minutes. <laughs> I don't know if the story is true, but it very much so is a dark story, okay? I would not be surprised in the slightest. He's like, yo, thank you. See you later. Bye. Easiest money I've ever earned in my life. Uh, the guy definitely does have uh, some Rockstar status sometimes. Anyways, whole lot of Zerk links coming up right here for Dark. Stargate opener once again here for stats. Links do manage to get into the base. Not what we're looking for here. Oracle now used to... yeah. Uh, forced to use the Pulsar Beam inside of the main. That's really rough. Not only is this annoying to have to deal with, right? But this also shuts down the Protoss aggression. Look at his Oracle right now. One energy. It's out of energy. It takes energy to activate the Pulsar Beam. So that's the actual, you know, attack that it uses to harass drones. And for the foreseeable future, this Oracle is gonna be, well, just hanging out. Sniffing the roses or whatever. Uh, we're on royal blood. There must be flowers somewhere. I don't know. There's a lot of gold. A lot of ornate, you know, decorations, but... Look at that. We even have some, uh, what do you call that? Topiary? That's the word that pops into my head. Is that the correct word? Don't think that's the word I've ever used before. I don't even know if that's how you pronounce it. Maybe one of those words I've ever... <laughs> I've only ever seen it written down. Anyways, a lair coming up right here for Dark. Four minutes and 20-ish seconds. Nothing all too crazy. Nothing all too strange. Very similar, though, to game number one. A lot of links once again just running around though. Third Nexus will be yeah, pretty well secured here. Roach Warren coming up. Second gas coming up as well. Well, actually, no. That is. <laughs> six gas? What in the world are we doing, Dark? Uh, six gas when you're at 40 workers, 45-ish workers. Not the norm. Usually what you do instead is you go for, uh, well, the mineral line first and then you add on some additional gas. Maybe one additional gas wouldn't be so strange. Okay. He does end up losing one of the oracles there. Deals a bunch of damage though to the drones. Notice as well that Dark is skipping spore crawlers here. No idea why. There's the Nidus network once again and it does get scouted. So, Stats does have vision right here of the Nidus worm. Okay. So, what exactly is the plan? We're gonna once again just rush our opponent? Please, okay, yeah, have some units in the main base. Stets now sees this coming from a mile away. He gets a little bit of time to mentally prepare himself for it. And apparently step number one is to make sure that we um, get the stalkers inside of the main base. Um, ooh, this is starting to look very tight, actually. I don't know if immortals... I think immortals are going to be able to squeeze in between. I mean, I'm assuming that's what we're gonna make. Why are we not starting up anything? We're going Observer first? Uh, or... <laughs> My Dutch was coming out. Observer first? Uh, Observer first? Are we Are we really gonna... Yeah, we're not gonna make Immortals? Okay. So we're just gonna make a whole lot of units. That's the plan. So far, good crisis management here once again by stats. Night is Worm going up in the back of the natural expansion. We don't have vision of the main base. Stalkers over there are gonna have to wonder. Fair enough. A little bit of creep coming up over here. Probes already getting the wrap around. We are gonna pop out a couple units, I believe, but no queens to transfuse the worm, so this is gonna be fine. My question is, can those stalkers wiggle their way out of the natural? Because that all looks like a very tightly built base. I am not sure that they can actually squeeze in between. Okay, the immortal does fit, but the immortal popped out on this side. I guess they need to hang out over in that area anyways, but it can be very helpful to bring your units a little bit closer to this battle over at the third base as well. Immortal needs to join in the battle. We're gonna actually counterattack right now. Okay, a couple adepts here. Well, four adepts. That's quite a lot. It's like half of the army that he's got. Um, I guess he's just giving up on the third base, killing a bunch of drones over here. Obviously, the queens, yeah, they can come back home again as well to make sure you can defend against those adepts. Good wraparound right here by Dark. He's gonna lose a bunch of drones, but he's also gonna be able to deal with the counterattack nice and quickly. I think the Stalkers are stuck. Yeah, okay, here he, he's trying right now. Yeah, no, the Stalkers can't go in between there. Yeah, no, the Immortals can't... Oh my god, no, he needs a prism. He's making a prism right now. There's a new third base coming up over here on the left side. Dark actually droning behind it. Infestation pit. 
could easily go into a hive. He could easily go into swarm host. He could go. He could do whatever he likes. I think one thing he likes to do though is kill the opponent's third base. Oh, oh! Don't lose the prism, man. I think we need to bring some uh, some of those stalkers out to play though. Oh my god. <sighs> yep. Yeah. No, Dark has once again found a weakness here. I mean, he's opening the front door. That's very kind of him. But that third nexus is super dead. Finally, the Stalkers can join in, but that was a gigantic blunder right there by stats. He should definitely not be, yeah, accidentally getting his unit stuck like that. Okay. Four Overlords coming up. Five. Infestation pit done. No Hive started up. I've got a feeling that this is going to be a Swarm host transition. There it comes. Oh, no. Yeah, no. Dark not going to, uh... Not going to allow his opponent a moment to breathe. Well, maybe just a small moment here. There will be some attacking units coming across the map. At this point, this, yeah, Infestation Pit is scouted. So Stats at the very least knows that there is a potential for Swarm Host. Twelve of them are already available. Stats trying to retake his third base, but he's got a lot of money in the bank going into a Disruptor. I mean, that's not the unit we're gonna need here, man. Would have much rather liked to see a Colossus or something like that, but I mean... Uh, also very tricky against this Roach Ravager based army. I honestly don't see an out right now for Dark or for Stats Rotter. Dark is just everywhere. I mean, he doesn't even look like he really needs Swarm Hosts. Well, they're gonna be coming out regardless. Fly, my little locust. Oh, now that was a big hit. You know what? That's a much bigger hit than I was anticipating. Problem is, what do we have right here against all of these Swarm Host locusts? Well, good micro. That's a good start. Actually, very nicely done right there by stats. I wonder what this game would have looked like, though, if he didn't accidentally lock, you know, half of his army inside of his own natural expansion. In the end, there can only be one winner, and that winner is Dark.